What's up, guys? It's Tonic here, and I'm back with another Top 10 Tuesday. This week, I'm going to be announcing my Top 10 Legend of Zelda items. So I'm going to be basing them off how powerful they are, how useful they are, um, how I use them as like a power-up or something. I'm not going to be including masks from Majora's Mask. I'm not going to be including any Hyrule Warriors items. And you'll see me move my excessive touch a lot because for some reason PowerPoint, like, it messes up the timing of when I do a new slide, like a next the next slide. So I'm going to be moving that a lot. So if you're wondering why that's moving, it's because it's really stupid and yeah. So anyway, let's get right into it with number 10. At number 10, I have the mirror shield, or you can, the Hyrulean shield, because not every game has the mirror shield. But the mirror shield can kill enemies by reflecting light, and can only be um, killed by reflecting light. And it cannot be killed by your sword, or arrows, or any other weapon. But it is a very good, um, it's a very good shield, it's better than, it's an upgrade to your normal shield, or if you don't even have a shield at all, it's a brand new shield, and it looks pretty cool too. And number nine, we have the swords. So any sword from any game, Master Sword, um, especially the four swords, the Golden Sword from Majora's Mask, and the Skyward Sword, where they're not the best weapon, but without it, you probably can't um, go through the entire game. Sometimes you can with like deco sticks instead of using the sword, but most games you need the sword in the game or else you probably can't get through it. But yeah, the sword is a very good item, especially like I said, the four swords because there's four of them and more swords equal more power. The Skyward Sword is also very good because you can use that to, um, it can actually make like beam swords, which is pretty awesome shoot laser beams out of it but yeah without it you probably won't get even through half of the the um, game but yeah so let's go on to number eight and number eight we got i have the boomerang now the boomerang is a very good item it can kill small enemies but big enemies just stuns them which leaves you an opportunity to either do a jump slash or just a regular hit and also the boomerang can hit switches grab items for you grab rubies um hearts um recovery hearts um basically any item it can recover and it does shoot pretty far also i like to mention the nice boomerang from legend of zelda um link between worlds where you can shoot up the three of them, and they shoot up pretty far, and they're pretty powerful too. Stunning up to three enemies at once, being able to shoot three at once. But it does cost magic and in some games, but most of the games, it's free, and it comes back to you, and there's no ammo, so very good. Um, at number seven, we have the Fire Rod. Now, the Fire Rod has was first introduced in um, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, where it did it does use a ton of magic, not that much actually, but it does shoot one um fire like ball and shoots it across the room and it does have very good range lighting torches very good for that and I also like to mention the nice fire rod like I said. In Link Between Worlds, like I did with the Boomerang, the Nice Fire Rod is very good and very powerful, being able to charge back up your magic in that game, and having to, um, having to, like, the Nice Fire Rod, what it does, it does a tornado of fire and swarms the enemy, causing them to follow the, fi like, the fire follows them, pushing them back, and it's a very good weapon. Or item, whatever you want to call it. At number 7, we have the hook shot, or the claw shot in some games. Now, the hook shot is a very good item. It is basically used to get across um, large gaps. There's also the long shot, too, which is an upgrade. 
and not that very good of an upgrade, but it still is an upgrade. Then you have the claw shot, or the double claw shot, to be sp specific, where you can claw into one thing, and then claw from that place, you can claw into another place, and go, like, to wall, to wall, or to, um, a flying object, to another flying object. And also, it can be used for com combat, too, where you can either take off someone's mask, or, like, armor, or shield, or you can also stun them, and I think in, even, even in some games, if you're equipping the iron boots, like in Wind Waker, you can either bring the enemy to you, or without the iron boots, you go to the enemy sometimes in some games. But anyway, at number 5, I think this is, I might be wrong, but... We have the bombs. Now, the bombs has appeared in, I think, every game except for um, Adventure of Link, which is the second game. And the bombs are very good, explosive. You can shoot, um, I think, more than one in some games. Like, I, rem I think in Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds, you can have, like, you can shoot three. Then you also have, like, the big bombs, which... Um, can follow you in that game too, but I'm not going to be talking about that because you can't, like, it's not a real item that you can bring around, but there is a nice bombs that are in that game, which makes them bigger and more powerful, and it does, it has a giant explosive, it can unlock, like, caverns by breaking walls and finding secret pathways, but... The only bad thing about it is in some games, not all of them though, there's no really sense of direction of where you're going to throw them. And I also like to mention bomb shoes are also a type of bomb, so that's also number five. Bomb shoes are very good, being able to climb up walls and yeah, and they're also a cute little mouse. Anyway, at number four, we have instruments. Now... Instruments have been in almost every game, either it's an ocarina, the goddess harp, or the wind waker, which you can see on screen right now, and basically what they do is, most of them, without them, you can't get through the game, like Soraya's song in Ocarina of Time, without that song, you can't even get into like the Temple of Time and other things too. Also, the goddess harp, without it, you can't really do much. And same thing with the Wind Waker. Without the Wind Waker, you wouldn't be able to change the wind direction, so you would just be going in one straight line and dying eventually and falling off or something. But yeah. Um, also, the ocarina, you can like change time in Wind Waker. I Not, not Wind Waker, um, George Mask. And I like to mention that the... Wind Waker is basically um, useless once you have the fast sail and the HD version. But if you don't have the HD version, then yeah, without the Wind Waker, you wouldn't be going anywhere. And also, you'd be able to command other things like um, like statues and I forget what that flying girl's name was. Um, Melody, yeah. And yeah, very good items. Also, you can make um, Ben appear with, I forget what song it's called, but um, you can make statues appear of your dead selves, like the Goron mask of dead, um, the great Goron, I don't know, I really don't know. I haven't played a Legend of Zelda game in a while, so I don't really know my Legend of Zelda facts, so, but I do my, know my items. But anyway, at number three, we have the um, Rock's Cape, which is an upgrade to the Rock's Feather and allows you to jump and hover for a short amount of time. It has appeared in, um, I think, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages and in um, Four Swords. Now, this is a very good item. Um, it allows Link to jump. I don't know why Link can't jump in the first place, but with it, he can somehow, and, um, it also gives a glide effect, too, being able to jump over large gaps, and I think you can attack 
sometimes, like when in air. But I think that might just be the rock's feather. But yeah, I mean, I like the rock's feather also. That's that's included uh, as number three. And, um, like the 2D sections of Legend of Zelda, um, Link's Awakening, where you have those 2D levels with the Goombas and the Piranha Plants, where you can do some crazy stuff. And basically, with the, um, Pegasus Boot and the, um, Rock's Feather, it can be the same as the, um, the Cape Feather. I think that's what, no, so it's not Rock's Feather. It's not Rock's Cape. I think it's Cape Feather. I might be wrong, but yeah, <laughs> that's number three. But anyway, at number two, we have the Hammers. Now, you have the Hammer has first introduced in Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, where it was called the Magic Hammer. And it didn't have that much range, only like hitting in front of you, and it wasted magic. But. The hammers that I'm talking about are the Skull Hammer and the Nice Hammer. So the Skull Hammer is a very good weapon. It's the heaviest weapon in um, in your inventory in Wind Waker. And slamming enemies with it is really fun. It's better than your sword. But it does take a while to like charge up and hit them. But it is very powerful. And I'm pretty sad that Toon Link doesn't have it. But anyway... Then they have the Nice Hammer, which is in Legend of Zelda, um, Link Between Worlds, which this hammer is very powerful, and um, it basically what it does what, is when you hit it, it sends a shockwave that is a very large shockwave, um, stunning any eni enemies in, it, in the shockwave, and also hitting the enemies that are in front of it, and basically killing them. And, yeah, it's very powerful. And at my number one spot, I have the bow and arrows. So you probably guessed it already. The bow and arrows, I feel like, are the best weapons or items in Legend of Zelda. Um, any game, they appear in almost every game. Again, they might not show up in um, the second game, Adventure of Link. But other than that, they show up in every game. The original game, it was a bit annoying because every ruby was one arrow. But now that I think about it, like, isn't like 10 arrows worth like 10 rubies in most games when you buy it at the shop? But yeah, you can have up to like 99, or if you do the glitch in Twilight Princess, you can have up to um, infinity arrows and bombs. And so. Also, I like to include in this list that bomb arrows are at the number one spot. Fire arrows, ice arrows, and light arrows because they all are part of the bow and arrow. And so the fire arrows, any ice thing in your way can be completely demolished. Anything that is fire or water can be destroyed by the ice um, arrow. And also with the ice arrow, you can... Um, freeze water from in front of you and step on it making it solid and then with the light arrows they are very powerful but they do take up a bit of magic a, a bit chunk of your a good chunk of your magic and they can completely obliterate any enemy in your way 99% of the enemies will die from the light arrows and then the bomb arrows now the bomb arrows are very good being able to um like i said before the bombs don't have really a sense of aiming but with the bomb arrows you kind of do have a sense of aiming and being able to shoot it as far as you can and i especially like them in skyward sword i don't really know why i guess because of the motion controls and it really feels like you're shooting a bow and arrow and sniping people and it just is my favorite weapon or item keep saying weapon i'm really sorry so yeah <laughs> this is probably bad commentating but please don't dislike <laughs> but <laughs> anyway um yeah so that is my top 10 legend of zelda items um sorry for the bad commentating i just i can't speak and 
Um, so my favorite Legend of Zelda item are the bow and arrows. So anyway, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, comment what your favorite Legend of Zelda item is. Also, let me know in the comments below any what top ten you want to see next and how I can make top tens better. Um, if you have any suggestions like how to make it better, because I don't really like using PowerPoint and I don't really have like a uh, Windows computer, so I can't do like Windows Movie Maker. But anyway, thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned for next week's Top 10 Tuesday. And I'll see you then. Bye.